she was very afraid. She called one of her sisters, that's what I heard here. So we are now in Kibbutz Biri, which was the site of one of the major incursions by Hamas on the morning of October the 7th. And we've heard some horrific stories of what happened here to the residents. Uh, terrible, terrible stories. Shot, killed, blown up in their own homes. And we've also heard some epic stories of bravery as well from the people who are involved, the security teams who, who fought for their lives to try and beat back the terrorists that day. This is security guard Yar Avital, a father of three and a survivor of Hamas's horrific October 7 attacks. With 10 others, he bravely fought off dozens of terrorists who attacked the now infamous Kibbutz Biri. Five of his colleagues lost their lives as well. Yair escaped with his by playing dead, covered in blood, vomit and badly injured. He still has a bullet lodged in his groin. His story is terrifying and some of the details are disturbing, but it must be told. We were 11. 11, OK. Uh, but uh, only six of us was with a weapon. And how many have, uh, how many have survived? Or how many survived? Six. I was here. Shachar looked that way, ate and that way, and every terrorist that came in this path, uh, they, uh, they killed. They not only keep this area, uh, this uh, clinic safe, they also uh, fight. Around the uh, 2 p.m., many, many terrorists was in these kindergartens. Shachar and Eitan also, the, 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 the arm uh, also uh, almost uh, finished. Shachar asked a meatman, go out with your, your hand uh, up, they will uh, spare you maybe. Paramedic Amit Mann also lost her life at BRE that day. The 22-year-old was in the clinic with Yar and others attending to the wounded. At 11.30, she sent a selfie to family, reassuring them she was fine her smile not showing the horror that was unfolding outside. Barely two hours later, terrified Amit called her family once more. They have given permission to use the recording you're about to hear. It was the last time they heard from her. Her body was found two days later. She called him and uh, I hear another shot and that's it. They celebrate here outside. They throw another grenade. I uh, broke this window and tried to go out. They were laughing. They put uh, the gun on my head. I pushed them. He laughed and say, just for fun in Hebrew, throw a grenade. Eight and hit, then they shot, uh, shot in, and eight and died. I went in, half body inside this clothing. I play dead. One grenade exploded here. I was here. One grenade didn't explode. I was half body inside, so my legs got hurt. But yes, I was lucky because eight and was here. He took. Almost everything. I was, I was naked, lots of blood from the morning, and I was black from the exploding. I was here two hours and 15 minutes. They took Eitan that room. They shot him. They took everyone, almost everyone, to this room and shoot them. I feel uh, bad. I feel <laughs> blame. I'm living in my community with... Uh, Many, many people that died that day, and I'm alive, and they dead, and now I, uh, I'm, li I'm living along with them, with uh, their families, play with my kids. 
that day kids parents and all people from Gaza we are a place uh, of peace that day three generation came to kill us so I don't have a lot of hope for them in inside I feel that I don't have a lot of hope kids burned our, our houses while the terrorist was out and shooting they took things and also came with the uh, axes and, and hit people I don't have all the answers but I understand now that we have to make a uh, different we have to make it something uh, very big to change the uh, the Gaza Strip now so on the morning of October the 7th the alarms sounded uh, the people had 10 seconds, 15 seconds at the most, to get into what every house has here on this kibbutz, a safe room with a steel door and also reinforced windows. Te usually it's for, for air raids to protect them from rocket attacks, but on that morning it was to protect themselves from the attack, the terrorists themselves, who were out armed with machine guns looking to take them hostage, looking to take them back to the Gaza Strip. Uh, go, go inside into the safe room, it's called in Hebrew the Mamad. The Mamad in a, usually um, protect us from the uh, rockets from Gaza. So when we heard the red alert, it's called the Tseva Adom. We have to run into the Mamad. We have between like seven to 10 seconds. It will be no a bit noisy. We close strong the Mamad and just wait to hear the boom of the, of the explosion. In Saturday, the Mamad had another role uh, to protect us from the, from the terrorists. In many cases, uh, we had to, to lock. This is the lock situation of the, of the door. And you see, we had to, to fight not, not to open. There, there. This was the, the fight on the handle, it's called. Because we had to hold the, 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 the handle. Because if the, the terrorists succeed to... To, to open the handle, we are killed, yeah. we were killed. We close this, you can see it's like very strong. In many cases, houses, they shot inside uh, the, the bullet, um, got inside from the, from the door. Because we can see that, that the, there was no uh, bullet remains on the door and no bullets inside the wall. So, for sure, they, they succeed to open the door of the Mamad. I don't know if they shot them here or they took them out and shot them on the house on the outside. Do you know how old they were? Like 60, something like this, in this area.